yeah, these are all things I've realized in the last couple of days or so. And I think a lot of it, a lot of it, weirdly enough, a lot of it, this is really going to be strange, has come from watching Yellowstone. <laughs> Yellowstone really got me introspective, really got me to dig deep, and really got me to think about so many different things. And why I really like it, and why I think it got me to think that way, and why it's really important as well to think about as I get this picture loaded up on the screen, this is a predominantly, because this is something I need to just echo and just say out loud here. This is a predominantly white show, right? Completely white cast. There's very little, you know, there's, there's very little in terms of like, if you're looking at it purely, purely for an ideological racial lens, there's very little you can identify with all this, right? With the people that are in Yellowstone. But human nature is human nature right that's essentially at its core what it is we all have families we have relationships we have dynamics and friendships workplaces dreams aspirations all these sort of things and it doesn't matter what you look like those are kind of universal truths and i think for whatever reason in mainstream hollywood nowadays they're so hell-bent on representation they're so hell-bent on you know ideological flipping politically possessed arguments that they forget the story human nature the story is kind of universal and if you tell compelling stories it doesn't matter who you get to present or play them it really doesn't matter and in this cast of people i'm not going to say everyone in this thing is a flipping oscar worthy actor i'm not going to say all the characters in this are very well fleshed out and are interesting i'm not going to say the plot line is flipping sopranos level because it isn't or the storylines but the stories about relationships friendships family um are just universal truths that anyone can kind of identify with and i think it really works super well without being too um cliche you know, it just kind of operates in that kind of nice little medium and it does really, really well. So I'm a really big fan of it. I've really been enjoying it. I'm not going to lie. I still think the prequels are better, weirdly enough, as stories. I think whatever lessons that you learn, I think, you know, it happens all the time in life. When you do one thing for ages and you go back and you maybe redo it, you know, you think of, a, you know, mock tests or you think of a, a drawing you want to do. The more you do it, the more at ease your hand feels, the more cleaner the lines are, the shapes, the colors, all this stuff. I think the same thing as Yellowstone. Whoever writes, I think it's was it Tim Sheridan or Tony Sheridan, something like that, something Sheridan. You know, you write Yellowstone first and then you start to kind of work out all the kinks and, the, you know, and the things that kind of work out, don't work out. And then when you start writing the prequels, you can kind of correct those things in the prequels. So the prequels are probably a better iteration of Yellowstone, which we, we haven't really seen it done this way, I don't think, in, when it comes to creating a universe. I don't think so. I don't think we've seen people create like a universe that's in the present time and then the prequels come after the fact, but they're kind of sequels. I don't think it's happening that way. And they're obviously creating a really big, expansive universe because there's another one coming about a really famous black cowboy. Um, from back in the day, I think he was an officer. I forgot his name. Uh, there's a really good biographics on him out there at the moment. Biographies, you haven't checked it out. It's a really cool YouTube channel that does really cool biographies on interesting people in history, interesting figures in history. And it's got a, a video on him that I haven't watched yet, but I remember ch checking it out. But there's one in the works now at the moment of a black cowboy that's happening very, very soon. And that's like a real person in history kind of thing, not something they just created just to make black people feel good and stuff. But I feel like it's really, really cool really important if one thing that really kind of touched me on yellowstone was this idea of ownership of land right this idea that the main guy in it um john dutton essentially comes from this dutton family that owns this ranch yellowstone this expansive fields of just grass where cattle and horses and whatnot graze upon and you know they live life and whatnot it's just an incredible incredible kind of place to look at scenically and they've got this amazing house and stuff like just and it's been passed through generation to generation i think it starts with 1883 to 1923 to obviously yellowstone in a sort of like modern times and this idea of ownership is really interesting because there's always this kind of conflicting story about you know, new development started to come in because at the moment that's what's going for in Yellowstone. You know, people are trying to basically take this guy's land from him and build new things there that will probably benefit more people in terms of housing, in terms of jobs and whatnot. Um, you know, a little city in the area that his farm is at. And then there's obviously the other side of things of the Native American or indigenous people that were there before Christopher Columbus bloody arrived who feel like they have ownership of that land because they were the first people on that land. And there's a whole conversation around it. And it got me thinking just in a really anecdotal, naive, 10-year-old kind of way. Would we have ever got an iPhone if Christopher Columbus didn't come in and basically commit genocide on, you know, on the native people that live on those lands? 
Like, will we, will we have had an iPhone? Probably not. And that's the brutality. That's the brutal, honest truth of history. The brutal, honest truth of history is that people do the unspeakable things to uh, take things from people, to assert power, influence, whatever it may be over, over, over the course of history. And you see that a lot in this Yellowstone. You see a lot of people dying. You see a lot of people getting financially ruined. You see a lot of people losing their jobs. A lot of people, you know, a lot of people getting fired. A lot of people, you know, you know, committing S word. Um, a lot of people getting off. All this stuff happen that happens, and it's sort of cool because it's a real reflection of what has happened in history. That's the same sort of thing, right? People would go and sack towns and cities and whatnot, and take them over, and like you know, uh, pillage the town, and all word all the wives and stuff, and take some people under, you know, uh, you know, basically ownership and make them become slaves. Really cruel and mean things to get the things that they wanted to protect their own, for the interests of their own family. That's how brutal. That's how brutal those things were back in the day, and it happens so often. And I feel like Yellowstone does a really good job in sort of depicting that without being too um, cheesy, without indulging you, uh, without, you know, infertiling it or making it just, you know, all rosy and all things go well in the end. And I also love the fact that as the cast, nobody in this entire cast of Yellowstone is redeemable. They're all pieces of crap in their own way. Every single one of them, even Casey. Right, the guy that's married to an Indian lady or to a Native American lady and stuff. Essentially, he's always put his family, um, Dutton, in front of his, you know, family that he chose in every shape or in every way, shape or form. And anytime his family does get close to the Duttons, um, something goes terribly wrong for them, and he can't see it for whatever reason. But they get warped into his vortex. And if anything, the family are also like that, right? Anyone that touches that family ends up, you know, something ends up going wrong, but it always kind of benefits the, the Duttons in some way, shape or form. Beth, um, Jamie, like no one in this flipping cast of people is redeemable. None of them. And I think that's what really works well. They're not like black and white characters. They're kind of grey. They've got some good, they've got some bad, but there's no one that you can really get behind and root behind and think, yeah, they're doing the right thing because they're not. Even uh, Beth's husband, a uh, Rip, you can't essentially call him a good guy because he's essentially, if you look at the real brass knucks of it, he's basically a serial killer, <laughs> right? So you can't really kind of call him a good dude either because he's, you know, offs people in the name of the ranch and stuff and takes them to the quote-unquote train station, which is absolutely hilarious. But the entire thing is pretty interesting to watch and I really do understand why it's become so popular because it's probably the only thing on TV that doesn't uh, baby you that doesn't try to preach some political message, that doesn't try and sugarcoat history or make it sanitized in any way, shape or form. It gives it to you in brutal, honest truth. And so far, in the whole five seasons of this show, we've not seen no redemption. There's not been some like big, oh my God, and then the natives took it all back kind of thing. It may be gearing up to it now, but in the five seasons so far, there's been no like, you know, because I think other shows would have done that. They would have immediately made it, okay, the Duttons got ran out of town, they're bankrupt now. Everyone's in prison in orange suits. And now this Native American family have owned, are owning the, uh, that Yellowstone. That's what it would make you feel like. But it hasn't happened. If anything, they've got no redemption. They've had no um, real consequences, you would say, that's kind of changed the course of their life. They kind of get away with everything. And I feel like that's a good you know, reflection of how the world actually is. But they also lose people because, you know, they've lost sons in the process. People that have, them have kind of died and whatnot. And I feel like that's more what I like about Yellowstone compared to Ozark. Ozark, I felt like, especially the last couple of seasons, they annoyed me because I felt like, um, I forgot what their names are, the family, but they don't have any repercussions. Like, why is Wendy, yeah, the bird, the bird family in Ozark, why is Wendy Bird still alive? Like, in any kind of scenario, you know, if the, if you were trying to make it somewhat believable, Wendy Bird would have died time ago because she's been a, you know, unnecessary distraction and an unnecessary kind of anvil on the back of whoever Marty, I think, Bird's um, heels are in terms of getting a job done with this cartel. She should have been off long ago or one of the kids or something. There should have been some consequences for that whole family's ineptitude and wanton, you know, uh, recklessness when it comes to dealing with those people. But I feel like Yellowstone does a good job of kind of working those real life consequences into things where people around them kind of just die. Um, in real tragic circumstances and it happens quite often all the time and i feel like that kind of makes the show way more interesting but i really enjoyed it i think it's really um fun to watch really easy to watch and i could definitely understand the hype around it and all the people kind of going google gaga over it check out yellowstone if you haven't already it's in season five i think it's like the last yeah i think it's split into two right season five part one and two 
Um, I think it goes up to about 10 or 12 episodes, I'm not too sure. But I smashed through the four seasons, obviously, the other day. And I really have enjoyed it so far. So I definitely recommend check it out if you haven't already. Definitely check it out if you haven't.